All right, welcome everybody. I want to describe a recipe for dualization. So together we derived the dual of a particular type of linear programming problem. If we have a linear programming problem where these constraints are less than or equal to constraints and we have non-negativity on all variables, then we, we showed how you could search for upper bounds on this maximum. And when searching for better and better upper bounds, you end up with a dual linear program where you're trying to minimize the transpose y subject to a transpose y is at least c and the y variables have to be non-negative. Okay. So we derived this carefully and, and I thought it was um, a lot of fun and pretty insightful. So go back in and um, make that your own. What this video is about is how do you dualize when your original linear program is of a different pattern? Maybe not all of your constraints are less than or equal to's, and maybe not all of your um, variables are with these non-negativity constraints. One thing to point out in, in this above dualization particular dualization is that A, matrix A is M by N, which means that our primal problem has N variables, X1 through Xn, and it has M constraints given by the M rows of this matrix A. Then when you dualize, you transpose this matrix. So now our vector Y has M variables, and we've transposed this matrix. So now this A transpose has N rows. So we have N constraints, okay? So the number of variables becomes the number of constraints and vice versa. Keep that in mind because in, in um, this dualization recipe, the direction of these inequalities is gonna tell you the direction of these inequalities because we have M constraints in the primal and M variables in the dual. And the direction of these inequalities is gonna tell you the direction of these inequalities because our N variables in the primal sort of correspond to our N constraints of the dual. Okay. So here's the recipe from our book, um, Matthew Seck and Gardner. Our primal problem has n variables. Our dual problem has m. The matrix goes from A to A transpose, just as we saw in this particular example. The right-hand side of our matrix equation goes from B to C, where C was previously our optimization function. The objective function goes from maximizing C transpose X to minimizing B transpose Y. Okay, so now you look at the constraints. In this particular example, all of our constraints were less than equal to's. And that's why in the dual problem, all of our constraints on the variables were non-negativity constraints. We'll see other versions of this momentarily. And in the primal problem, all of our variables were found to be non-negative. And that's why um, in the dual problem, all of these bounds are the same direction. So you'll notice that when you go from constraints to variables, you swap the direction. But when you go from variables to constraints, you preserve the direction of the inequalities. These are just recipes that you can derive in the same way we derive this problem. And I think it'll be a good ex exercise for us to do that, myself included, on the homework. Okay, let's, let's, uh, let's use this recipe on a different format of a problem. So pretend I give you a different primal problem. My original problem is maximize C transpose X subject to AX is at most B. That all looks familiar, but I don't have the non-negativity constraints, okay? So this has been completely removed. All 
All right, so let's go through my recipe. The maximize C transpose X becomes a minimum B transpose Y. And then my A becomes an A transpose. My right-hand side becomes a C. How do I figure out what the direction of these inequalities should be? Well, remember, for the constraints in the dual, I look at the variables on the primal. And on the primal, my variables were, had no constraints. They were any real numbers. So on the primal, since my variables had no constraints, that means on the dual, um, these bounds have to be equality. And then how do I find the bounds on the variables of the dual? You know, I look at the constraints of the primal. And on the primal, I had less than or equal to constraints. And so then on the dual, I have um, bigger than or equal to non-negativity on all the variables. I'm just following this recipe in this table. Um, we'll do an example with actual numbers, uh, but questions so far? Okay. So here's a specific problem with numbers. You'll notice that some of my constraints are um, equalities, some are not. Some of my variables are, are non-positive, others are non-negative, and others are unbounded, right? There's no bound on variable x2. Okay, so what is our dual problem? We always minimize b transpose x, b transpose y. This is my vector b. So I'm minimizing 4y1 plus seven y2. I know that I have two variables, y1 and y2, because my primal problem had two, um, two constraints. All right, so we transpose this matrix. Okay, so when I transpose this matrix, it looks like two, one, zero, one, negative one, three. Hopefully I did that correctly. The two is really gonna be two y one. Um, that one is gonna be plus y one. And then the zero and one just becomes a y one. And then the negative one and three becomes negative y one plus three y two. Okay. This matrix times the vector y is going to be compared to the we, vector. Yeah, go ahead. I think we have an error. Uh, I think we need, uh, in the first line, it should be uh, 2y1 plus y2. And Thanks. then the, the second line should be y2. Thank you. Totally right. Save me, Patrick. All right, so I always compare a transpose times y to the vector um, b. Sorry, C. Okay, so vector C is three, two, four. So I compare this to the vector three, two, four. All right, and now the directions of these inequalities are coming from the variables of the primal. Okay, so my first primal variable was X1 is non-positive. So that means that my first constraint should be less than or equal to three. My second variable, x2, there's no bound on x2. x2 is any real number. So that means my second constraint should be an equality. All right. And then my, my um, third variable is non-negative. So I look up here, and that means that my third constraint should be greater than or equal to. And then I just need to tell you. Uh, what do I know about y1 and y2? You know, are they non-negative, non-positive? So to figure out that, we look at the constraints of the primal. 
So the first constraint had a greater than or equal to. So that means y1 is less than or equal to zero. And the next constraint had a um, equals two. And so that means y2 is, is unbounded. I mean, yeah, a priori y2 is unbounded, but then you can solve for it there. So that's an example of going through the recipe. I'm just, yeah, it's like um, cooking dinner. I'm just following the recipe. Um, what's more enlightening is on our homework, we'll, we'll try to derive some of these rules in the same way that we derived this. Any questions? Thanks so much. I want you to be aware that these recipes exist. Um, <laughs>